G'day, welcome to Catalyst. People have wanted to hold the record as the fastest driver on the planet ever since cars have been around. Back in 1898, it stood at just 63 kilometres an hour. Today, it's around 1,220. Well, I recently caught up with a guy in Perth who wants to break that and travel at a staggering 1,600 kilometres an hour. Speed is exciting. An addictive thing for some. But this city is home to a man who's taken speed addiction to a whole new level. This is a typical suburban street on Perth's northern beaches. Now people build their big houses here, their big garages. Check out what this guy has in his garage. There's the famous Roscoe. Oh, hey, mate. How are you, mate? You got a rocket in your garage here. Come and have a look. Right, there she is. Roscoe McGlashan is building a rocket-powered car. If all works out, it'll make him the fastest man on wheels. It's the world's most powerful car. 200,000 horsepower or 62,000 pound of thrust. It makes about the power of two and a half hornet aircraft. They're very powerful. This car has been designed to travel from zero to 1,600 kilometres an hour. That's almost one and a half times the speed of sound in just 20 seconds. In fact, it could have been designed to accelerate even more quickly, but then the wheels would have trouble keeping up and they wouldn't stay stuck to the ground. Roscoe's dream began when he was a boy. At age 12, Donald Campbell came across here in about 1964 and set the world land speed record. Like a young bloke at the time, I turned to my mates and I said, well, that was pretty neat, but I said, my car's gonna go a heap faster than that. And obviously they all laughed at me. A week later, I quit school, put the age up to 16 and went working and with the uh, desire to become the world's fastest man. Conditions seemed perfect as the Bluebird crew made ready for what looked to be the big day. Uh, the course is much smoother. The boys have done a first class job on that. They got rid of most of the bumps. There's still one or two left, which of course are negligible at 200 miles an hour, but uh, assume fairly gigantic proportions at four. Donald Campbell's car, Bluebird, created a sensation as it raced along the salt flats of Lake Eyre in South Australia. That was a huge thing. It was bigger than Ben Hur. A man hadn't been landed on the moon at that stage, and for a guy to drive a car at 403 mile an hour or 647 kilometres was a, was a mammoth achievement. 647 kilometres an hour may have been quick in 64, but Roscoe himself has already driven faster in his earlier car, Aussie Invader 3. We actually took this car faster than any car in the world. At the time when we ran back in 96, we took it to 1,026 kilometres an hour when the world record was 1,019. But the big thing with the land speed record, you've got to do two runs. You've got to, it's an average of both runs, so you've got to go both directions. But that day, a second run was impossible because of water on the track. So frustratingly, Roscoe postponed for a month. Meanwhile, the Poms went out with their uh, twin-engine car and run 1,227 kilometres an hour, so made this poor baby redundant. It's very, very scary when you first sit in the car and you think, oh, what am I doing here? This is absolutely crazy. But once you start getting a couple of runs on the board, it becomes quite easy. This car is powered by a Mirage jet engine, so it has a massive hole in the front, the air intake, and that requires special design attention. What's this? Hey, that's a, usually all the girls ask that. That's a uh, that's a, what we call a sonic probe. That's the extreme front of the car. It's the first part of the car to generate a shock wave off the end of that, and it sends that shock wave out around the outside of the intake, so the shock wave doesn't go down the intake. For any jet, if a shock wave gets into the engine, it could stall. So, for his new car, Roscoe wants to move on from jets to rocket power. In essence, a rocket engine is very simple. Exhaust gases push out the back and the rocket reacts by moving in the opposite direction. It's that old law of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The same principle is involved when a gun jolts back in the opposite direction after a bullet fires out. What will be fired out of Roscoe's rocket engine will be the explosive result of fuel being injected through those holes along with oxidizer, hydrogen peroxide. The mixture will spontaneously ignite, blasting out the back, propelling the car forwards. 
maximum power in five milliseconds. So it's just a, <laughs> just a controlled <laughs> explosion. Roscoe's car is really just a rocket with a seat in it. In the nose cone are the front wheels and the computers needed to run the car. Behind that is the hydrogen peroxide tank. It's four and a half metres long and holds a massive two and a half tonnes of oxidant. Then there's a smaller tank of compressed nitrogen. Its job is to push the hydrogen peroxide through to the rocket engine. Behind the driver is another tank of nitrogen to push the fuel. And behind that, the fuel itself, a biofuel. But there are challenges to building a car that can speed to 1,600 kilometres an hour. We know that when a plane breaks the sound barrier, it generates a shockwave, the sonic boom. With an aircraft, the shockwave goes sideways, above and below. But obviously, with the ground only that far away, the shockwave's got to intensify. And what happens with these vehicles is it gets a massive pressure wave under the front of the car, and what it can actually do and intensify so much, it can pick the back of the car up and actually tip the car over. That V-shape underneath is to help deal with the shockwave. If the car does flip, Roscoe insists the roll cage will keep him safe. The roll cage is very, very strong. It's designed that if a car tips up at 1,000 mile an hour, this car, that it can actually run for a long, long time. Be able to pull up just on the strength of that on, on its roof if it had to. You might be able to break the record upside down. <laughs> well, that's not a record. We've got to keep, keep four, four wheels on the ground at all oh, times right. to qualify right. for a record. The wheels present a big challenge. They'll turn at an incredible 160 times every second. These ones would just fall apart. At that speed, the centrifugal force on each wheel's outer edge is around 300 Gs. The team are currently designing a carbon composite wheel that could cope with that. Not surprisingly, perhaps, like for Donald Campbell, fear of death is not a factor for Roscoe. Oh, it's a dangerous activity, but yeah, what isn't dangerous these days? You can die and go to work just as easily as you could driving this out on a big lake somewhere. First time I light the wick on this car, I'm going to be absolutely terrified. I'll probably have to be on Valium to get in the car. The main thing that stands between Roscoe and his childhood dream is money. If he could raise $3 million right now, he could be the fastest man on the planet in 12 months' time.